Super Tuesday. People and that's in all Florida, almost 50% said the economy was the single most important issue. Those voters voted for John McCain. Is that because they didn't buy the Romney message or because it was so muddled by all the different personas we've seen so far? Well, I think there was muddling there in Florida, but I, but I also think that's really Romney's strength. And I think that he has to show that I am the leader that can take you out of this recession. I am the one for the country. I am the one that can beat the Democrats. And he's got to stick to that message. Okay, if we give you a hallucinogenic and we told you you had to give advice to a Republican, Mitt Romney says, what do I do here with five days to go? What do you tell him, Tom O'Neill? I, I tell him to, uh, I repeat what Ann said, to be very honest with you. Take off the mask. You've been programmed by your handlers sin since the get-go of this candidacy. It hasn't worked. It's not the real you. Uh, be yourself between now and Tuesday as best you can. Get off the war. It's not your issue. The most important issue before the American public today is the economy. Brothers, start talking about it because that's your issue. Is it? Is is the? Uh, is the? What, what? What? What leaves the station? Is the train left the station? Though I'm not talking about whether or not he can pull the whole thing together. Can you change your message? Or, well, actually, he started with that message in Michigan. But can he actually? zero in on that laser-like with so few days to go and have all the baggage disappear? I just heard that he's now they're putting some money into ads in California. Six states, California and, and five six states, years. right, too. I'm sure the message is going to be the economy and also not directing it to uh, John McCain, but to the Democratic candidates and showing that he is the leader to lead us out of this. You know, they met, you're both an elected official, obviously a deep connection to politics for your whole life. It is so obvious to me as an outsider that what you're saying about Romney is exactly who he should have been the whole campaign. How is it not obvious to an incredibly smart guy surrounded by so many other smart men and women that he should be who he is, a business guy who knows how to turn things around? I think they took too many playbooks out of the, out of the last elections, if you will. And that is that they really kind of cast their lot with the evangelical right. Uh, I, I think that this year is a more moderating year. I think the Iraqi war has, has loomed over the, over the landscape, politically speaking, for a very long while, number one. Number two, the economy is failing, and it's, and it's, and it's fading quickly. Um, I, I think what they did was they tried to uh, appeal to that right-of-center evangelical uh, vote that, frankly, I think has been muted this year and in, in this election, and I think the moderate Republican Party is coming to the forefront again and showing... In the person of John McCain. In, in the person of John McCain, Giuliani, and, and what we see coming out to vote, frankly. Let, let me stay with you, Tom O'Neill, when we switch to the Democratic side, if we can. Uh, is the message that Barack Obama is campaigning on enough to get him through here? Yes, we can change generational difference. And while, I mean, Phil Johnston was here last night, former head of the state party, mm -hmm. and said, of course, he's got tons of substance, but you have to go to his website to find the substance. Ten Obama supporters on the street would say he was Thank against so the war, much. but that, Thank I think, you. would be the end of the litany Thank of things everybody. they'd know. Does he have to put Thank some you. beef on this message? Well, in a way, he has. He's, he's, talked, he's talked a little bit about the economy, perhaps not as much. He's got a terrific uh, health policy, and he's got a terrific educational policy. He has, in part, talked about them both, and it, I think it has separated him from the rest of the field, with the exception of, of Hillary Clinton. But every time he mentions health policy, the thing that comes to get thrown back at him is, hey, every reporter says you don't cover whatever it is, $15 million. He opens no, in 50 million people. Every reporter doesn't say that. Well, no, actually, the, the other two have. candidates have said that, and the reporting public have kind of backed into it and agreed to it. The fact of the matter is, if you look at the health plan, it is a universal health coverage program, and, and it works. But uh, with encouragement, not with mandates. No, but so with encouragement, exactly joking. right. So there's some pragmat uh, pragmatism to it, but I think it's reality. I I'm not overly defending it. I don't want to do that, but I think... You do not have a candidate either, we should say, correct? Uh, yeah, I probably uh, will wind up voting for Barack Obama. Oh, you will, okay. Um, only because I like what he's done to my kids. Uh, both, for O'Neill's, were more than ambivalent about, about politics. Um, you sound like Caroline Kennedy. I you must said tell in great you, part she made her decision based on her three I must tell you, children. my daughter on our own nickel went out to Iowa twice to campaign for Barack Obama. My son is coming home from school from New York to campaign in Massachusetts for Barack Obama over the weekend. To have that kind of movement is not only fascinating to me, but it reminds me of my own day and age when I had Jack Kennedy and then Bobby Kennedy. I like the feeling for our kids, and I like what it does for the American political place. Let's flip to the, it's hard after that to yeah. move to the other side <laughs> of the equation. Let's talk about your fellow female. Now, since you're a Republican, you're not accused of treason for ever saying a good thing about Barack Obama. So let's talk for a minute about uh, Hillary 
Clinton, most people thought the reason why she had such a tough go. Remember now, you are, at least in part, the family is somewhat democratic. And your, family, <laughs> your family is watching. Uh, uh, people thought that part of the South Carolina problem was not just the strength of Barack Obama, but the, the intrusion of Bill Clinton, the candidate, not the husband there. She has he, taken the advice of James Clyburn and told the husband to chill. Is that enough? I mean, is that the only mid-course adjustment she has to make leading up to Tuesday and Murphy? I think that was a very tough thing for her campaign, and I think that, you know, please step aside, honey. <laughs> I got to do this on my own. And I think it, it eroded some of her support with the establishment, people for endorsements. And but he has, he has backburned. No one knows if constitutionally he can control himself, but the last few days he's been quiet, he's been backburner. That is the only major thing she has to shift. Is it not, or is it? I don't know. I think that she has to continue showing that she can be the one that's going to win, that she is the better candidate, has more experience, and... And that she's ready on day one. I know, that's what she said. Hey, can we step back for a second and talk? You know, it, it's sitting... I didn't even thought about this till I see you sitting here. In the last debate, when Hillary Clinton raises the issue of, you said the Republicans have ideas. Yeah, I did, but they're not good ideas. You said something good about Ronald Reagan being transformative. Well, I didn't really mean it. I'm sitting across from a guy, every time Ronald Reagan is mentioned, which is every other sentence, the guy who is at the end of the sentence is your father. And they talk about the guys who couldn't have disagreed more on substance, but who treated each other like human beings. Partisanship didn't lead to bitterness and all this sort of stuff. Isn't that what people really want? They want people to stand for what they believe in, whether it's Tip or Ronald Reagan, but they don't want this notion that a candidate, Obama, who you're leading towards, cannot even utter the words, Ronald Reagan actually did something good and still be endorsed by the Democratic Party. Isn't that a problem? It, you know, I, I think the level of anger, the vitriol, in, in both parties during the course of their series of debates, both Republican as well as Democrat, uh, has been troubling for the American public. I think one of the things Obama does bring is a calming influence. I mean, he does his best to kind of steer clear of, of the anger levels coming and, and being leveled at him. Um, but why couldn't you have even said the word, frankly, Hillary Clinton? Ronald Reagan did have a good idea or two. I wouldn't have voted for him. He doesn't have my political view. But there were a couple of ideas that mattered. Yeah, I mean, I, why I, can't I, even mouth those because words? Because I think the era of, of this politician has dictated that people don't do that. That the, the era of civility in American politics has gone by us, you know, 15 or 20 years ago. And boy, wouldn't it be nice to see it come on back. Well, speaking of coming back, while John McCain, and I'm going to speak about this in a minute, does not have the ability to be civil to Mitt Romney, mm -hmm. he is the guy, is he not, who is closest to that. He actually talks to Democrats. He actually puts his arm around a Democrat. He talks Thank to Ted much. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. I mean, is he not the one who could fill that hole where he is not ashamed? Well, I think, but that's a double-edged sword for him. That shows that he's an insider. He's been there for a long time. And Mitt's position is, I'm the outsider. He's part of the problem. Yeah, but isn't that what America wants at the end of the day? Maybe hardcore Republicans want, don't want, but don't, I don't mainstream know Americans they, want that? I'm not sure they do. I don't know if they know what they want. I think they do want change, and they want leadership. Hey, we're going to have change here. Ann Murphy, Tom O'Neill, it's a pleasure. You're still talking to each other Absolutely. after this? Absolutely. We're going to kiss after this. Thank you. <laughs> Coming up, I apply the animosity meter to the candidates. I'll explain in a minute. Stay right there.